Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials Video 3. It's on the mole. The mole is an incredibly important term, but it, remember, it's just a number. It's Avogadro's number. Why is it important? Well, it allows us to deal with the massive number of atoms that are found in matter. This is one of my favorite demonstrations. You take a five-gallon jug, put a little bit of alcohol in it, like ethanol, uh, and, and when you light it, you get this huge woof and this huge combustion of the ethanol. If we were to write out the formula, it looks like this. Why am I talking about this when I'm talking with moles? Well, remember those coefficients that you write in front of the compounds in an equation like this represent the number of moles. In other words, how many massive number of atoms are interacting. And so it's really important when we deal with chemistry to understand what the mole is. And the mole is simply Avogadro's number. It's a number. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Where does that number come from? It's derived from the number of atoms uh, in 12 grams of carbon-12, but it just gives us a usable amount of material that we can work with in the lab. So if we're ever looking at a reaction like this, the coefficients, remember, are going to represent the moles. But it also serves as a bridge, most importantly, a bridge between the mass of an object and the number of particles that are found within that object. And so where does the name come from? Avogadro was an Italian chemist, worked many years ago in the early 1800s. And so he came up with Avogadro's law. Basically, as we increase the volume of a gas, he proposed that we were increasing directly the number of particles that are found within that. Didn't matter what the gas was. Now, he died before they actually came up and quantified this idea of the mole, but we still give him credit for that early work. And so one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But it's just a quantity. It's like if I have one egg, we call that an egg. But if I have 12 eggs, we call that a dozen. And so a mole is just a number. We could have a mole of anything. But it's most important when we're dealing with chemicals. To give you an idea of how massive this number is, imagine if I had a mole of marbles. So just regular marbles like this. And I were going to start covering the earth. Well, I could cover the earth in marbles, and that covering of the earth would be three miles thick. And so there's a huge amount of numbers in Avogadro's number. And so when you're dealing with even small amounts of a compound, small amounts of an element, you have to understand that you have that many atoms that are found within there, massive amounts. Again, it forms a bridge. It forms a bridge between the mass of an object and the number of particles that are found there. And so it's really important at that kind of a bridge point. And so let's talk briefly about what an atomic mass unit is. And so let's say we take carbon dioxide, for example. It's going to be found in the air. You breathe it out. Um, its atomic mass unit is going to be the mass of each of the individual atoms. And so we have one carbon. So we could look on the periodic table. And the atomic mass of that is 12.01. And then we're going to add two oxygens. Each of those are 16. And on the periodic table, we could find it here. And so its atomic mass unit of carbon dioxide is going to be 44.01. And so what is an atomic mass unit? It's the, the mass of one nucleon. So that could be the mass of a proton or a neutron. Now, why is that important? One mole of carbon dioxide, then, is going to weigh 44.01 grams. Let's say we're looking at nitrous oxide. Could you figure out the atomic mass unit of that? You could pause the video and try to figure this out. Well, you'd have to find the nitrogen, you'd have to find the oxygen, and we'd simply add that up. So it'd be 30.01. But if we had a mole of carbon dioxide, that'd be 30.01 grams. And so it forms this bridge between the mass of an object and then the number of particles that are found within that. And this is where sometimes people get confused about the mole when they're trying to make these mole conversions. And so let's say I had 9.01 grams of water. It's about almost 10 milliliters of water. And so that'd be about two teaspoonfuls of water. And let's say I wanted to figure out how many molecules of water are found inside there. Let me show you how the mole can act as a bridge. So we have 9.01 grams of water. The mole is going to act to convert that into the number of particles. So first we use this mole conversion. Remember, one mole of anything is going to be the atomic mass of that in grams of water. So where am I getting the 18.02? I'm adding the one oxygen, 16, plus the two hydrogens. And so one mole of water is going to be 18.02 grams. And so what I could do is I can cancel those grams. So now I've converted it to moles of water. Now we use Avogadro's number. And so I'm going to take one mole of water is equal to a number of molecules of water. So one mole is equal to Avogadro's number of that. I can now cross off my moles. And now I can solve for the number of molecules of water. And what I get, the math is easy here since I'm taking this dividing by 18.02. Uh, 
we get 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd. And so, I mean, wrap your head around that for just a second. Two teaspoonfuls of water, the number of water molecules are, that are found in there would cover the earth in marbles if we converted those molecules to marbles one and a half miles thick. And so now let me give you one for you. Let's say we had 5.72 grams of glucose, C6H12O6. Could you convert that to molecules of glucose? And so here are the atomic masses here. I'll put the answer in the video description down below so you can check and make sure you're doing it right. Remember that mole serves that bridge. It's also incredibly important in chemical reactions. This is one of my favorite reactions. This is a thermite reaction. We're getting a combination of iron oxide with aluminum. And so since it has the oxygen source inside it, you could, this would burn underwater if you wanted to. Okay, so what did we learn in, in summary? Uh, could you pause the video and fill out what's in the blanks? Let me do that for you. So a mole is Avogadro's number. Do you remember what that is? It's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's going to form a bridge between mass and the number of particles. And then we use it to quantify chemical reactions. And so when we're looking at those coefficients in the front of any kind of a chemical reaction, it's going to tell us the number of moles. And so what should you have learned? Did you learn this? that the mole allows us to connect particles, moles, mass, volumes all together, both qualitatively uh, in the form of, for example, a chemical reaction where we're writing that out, and quantitatively, actually calculating the number of particles in, in material. So that's the mole. It's just a number, and I hope that was helpful.